my first job interview for what I was hoping uh, would be a fashion illustration position um, was so horrible. The guy was a complete jerk. He, he totally um, was the power in the room and I was a vulnerable, you know, 18 year old. And um, he, instead of looking at my portfolio as he ate his tuna sandwich with his feet up on his desk, he asked me to turn around for him. And I did, and because I just didn't, I was like, turn around, okay. I turned around and then I just, tears just started coming down my face and I ran out. I was so humiliated. And I thought, I want nothing to do with the fashion industry. I don't like this. I don't want to be around people like that. And so I look back at this man and I thank him for pushing me out the door and into finding something else. So I got the Times. At the time, that was a place where you could look at classifieds or jobs. Airlines were the, the kind of apple of the day. Like they were the, the place you would want to work that was cool. And, and people were actually taking trips on planes and going places. And I don't know how, but I got a job in the office and I wanted to travel. So I was able to travel round trip for four years for $29 each weekend. I wow. would leave on a Thursday night and I would come back on a Monday. And so I was in London through the beginning and the rise of what would be the 60s revolution. And it was just talk about being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. I, I will tell you, it was truly exciting and very disruptive, like the time we're in now. Um, and I worked on a computer at the airlines. I worked on a Univac computer, which gave me insight to how technology really can enhance your life. So I, I've always been very pro-technology as a result of that position. And so London was the place that I would come back wearing clothes that had never been seen before. Clo dresses never were, below, were above the knee. Dresses were always below the knee. Think, think Mad Men, right? Yeah. So now I'm coming back with dresses mid-thigh. And in history, women did not wear skirts above their knee up until that point. So it was beyond provocative and then my friends wanted the clothes so I bring them back clothes and then I just decided to open a store and sell the clothes so for $285 a month I had a little basement store where I sold the clothes that I brought back from London wow. and then in, and then in, in a short time I started to think of clothes that I would like to see that would complement what I was bringing back from London, and I started to make clothes, and that's really how it began. Wow. Was this also, was this your first interview ever, where this guy, like, told you to turn around? Like, you was that, like, the it, first interview? It was my, the first fashion job interview, yeah. And, and so, you know, I, I, I think about how often in my life, some really awful, very um, difficult situation or person um, made, my, made me think that I couldn't tolerate it anymore. And instead of accepting mediocre or accepting something that is not painful and you sort of hang out and, and when you should leave or walk away it's people like that in situations like that that the universe i believe puts in front of us so we don't go in the wrong direction and he he was so key for me to go to just i'm traveling i'm not i don't want to be in the fashion industry i don't want to be here and to this day 
I've never had a showroom on 7th Avenue. I've never worked in that area. I've never, never, never. And I guess it's not an accident as I look back at it now, never wanted to be near there. Wow. And I mean, you know, you hear of so many stories where something like that happens like later in someone's career in a way, like, did you ever say, well, this was a blessing, not that it set you on the course, but just like, you recognize the signs. Cause I think a lot of times you don't recognize signs when you're in something, it's all innocent. No, no like not your mind when it's needs- happening. Yeah, when it was happening. And, and to be honest, uh, when I went home, my mother said, well, did you get the job? And I said, no, I didn't. Uh, I never told her what happened. I was just like, I turned around. This guy tells me to turn around. Am I going to tell people that I was a total idiot for doing that? No. And it took me probably till about 10 years ago to even talk about it. I mean, that's how many of these, and I'm sure it happens to guys too. And it, where, where you're so humiliated and embarrassed and you're, you're objectified and someone more powerful it owns that space and you're the vulnerable one where you do something that you think, I, this is, I would never do this. Why did this happen? And, and so you don't want to talk about it. You don't want people to know what an idiot you are and that you made this ridiculous, you know, did something that, that you shouldn't have done. But when you're, you're that age, you're so vulnerable. Again, going back to the conversation we had at the beginning, you're so vulnerable. Everything that happens during that period of time till you're in your like 30 at least, you're so, you're experiencing some very painful stuff because you're learning life's lesson as an adult for the first time. So I learned that lesson well. Um, not to say that I didn't have men objectify me or that I didn't objectify myself with men that I dated to think that, you know, if I let them objectify them, me, they would fall in love with me and then everything would be great. I mean, we all do that. Like, it's totally idiotic. But I, I learned that I, I I learned that I could do something else and that I didn't have to be vulnerable, that there was another option that I could find 